Welcome to the video, everybody. My name is John. Today, I'm going to show you a demonstration of the tool that you're currently seeing on the screen. And I use this tool to make purchases, wiser purchases on eBay. Uh, before we actually go through the demonstration, let me get, talk about what you're going to see over the next uh, couple of videos. Uh, the tool is the research tool. Part one is the video I'm recording today, and that's the demonstration of the tool. I know whenever I watch kind of a how-to video series, I always like to understand or see how the tool works before I make a decision if I'm going to commit any more time to it. Over the next couple of days, you'll see a part two video where we will be building the framework of the tool, and we'll start pulling in eBay sales data, uh, which you'll see here in a moment. Part three, we're going to add in shipping data related to eBay sales. Part four, we're going to pull in the date related to eBay sales, which is critical for trending and data analysis. Part five, we're going to be talking about the current items that are for sale. So that we're looking not just at the sold items, but we're also looking at items that are in the marketplace, which gives us a better idea of you know, how hot a t uh, an item is or how aggressive we may need to be when purchasing uh, a specific item. Uh, part six, we are going to be talking about something which is specific to the sports card market. And let me just share here for folks that are watching, if you are not part of the sports card market, you can still benefit from this. There are input variables that we'll be looking at here in a moment. You can just morph those input variables to whatever niche or marketplace you're in and uh, it'll work for you no differently. So the, the variables in this, this whole system doesn't work just for sports cards, but we will be using sports cards as the, uh, the platform to share uh, the, the research that we do. Second piece I wanna talk about is formulas. This video series uh, or, or this data is not being extracted from um, the Google API, nor is it being extracted using web scraping in traditional uh, purposes or traditional formats like uh, Python. We are also not storing the data in a database. All of the information is being extracted via formulas. And uh, I have an example formula up here, which is probably the most basic formula that's in Excel and or Google Sheets. And that brings me to the next topic. We will be using Google Sheets as the tool to, to extract this information and do the data analysis for us to present us with the data that we want to see. So uh, the formula, though, that we're talking about uh, that's on the screen, this is the most basic formula out there. If you understand that this is a sum formula, which is going to add whatever number is in cell A1 to, to whatever is in cell A2 and provide you a result, if you can understand that, then you'll have no problem following along with the rest of this video series. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual tool. Let's start with the inputs. These inputs are what are creating a URL that then we use that URL to extract the specific item in eBay. So in this case, again, we're talking sports cards. We are looking at a 1954 Hank Aaron. That happens to be his rookie card. It is a tops card. It is card number 128. And we are looking for that, or we are searching up the grade level of three. For folks that may be watching this that aren't familiar with sports cards, there are third-party grading companies that will assign a one to 10 scale uh, on the quality or condition of a card. And so one being the worst, 10 being the best. Uh, normally on these older cards that are over 50 years old, a grade of three isn't the best, but it's definitely competitive considering that they still are uh, selling for thousands and thousands of dollars. Let's quickly talk about, uh, we're gonna ignore this section for a moment. We'll talk about that at the end. Let's start talking about rows 17 through 30, row one. This is the sales data that is being pulled when we enter these variables in. Uh, we want to understand the number of sales that have taken place in the last 90 days. eBay provides us the ability to research the last 90 days. This link will just take us to eBay and it will actually show those sales over the last 90 days. Coming back to our uh, spreadsheet here, uh, it will share what the average price of those sales were plus the 
this includes the shipping prices. Now, this is something that you can navigate eBay and find yourself, but it takes a little bit of time if you're having to click into each independent listing. And then, yes, I do understand that there's tools out there like 130 point that can kind of show it all in one place. And those are valuable tools, but those tools show you the individual sales and don't necessarily formulate it in averages and show trending information uh, like what this tool is designed to do. Again, unique to the sports card industry, we want to understand if there's a premium between PSA, which is a grading company, and SGC, which is a grading company, which for this specific card in the grade three, there's about a $10 premium. We then like to look at trending data. We well, look at 7, 14, 30, 90, and, or 60, and 90. And what we're looking for is percentage of change. And so if you've seen giant swings in percentage of change, one way or the other, either positive, which would mean that it's a, high, a hotter item, or negative, it would mean that it's basically a, a cooler item and, and not selling as well or selling for less money. But generally something in kind of this ballpark range means it's kind of selling pretty average, pretty flat across the board. We are also pulling in the last sell, which I find is valuable to just give you kind of a, a basic idea of was the last sell higher or normal or lower than the normal uh, average sell price. And then we're looking at highs and lows. What was the high over the last 90 days? What was the low over the last 90 days? Specifically looking at the low as a buyer, I'm seeing that that's about four or $500 lower than the average price. So somebody potentially got a pretty good deal on that card. The SGC information completely mimics what you're seeing over here on the PSA side. It's just a different grading company. And for those in the sports card hobby, you could add CGS, you could add uh, Beckett if you had a, a, a want and a desire to. You would just over the next couple of days, you add those to your search criteria. We'll talk about those in the next couple of videos. We also like to look at uh, pending information that's for sale, things that are currently listed, how many auctions are currently listed for this specific item in this specific grade. There's 12. Again, a link which will take us to eBay and, and provide us with those 12 auctions in case we wanted to go bid on a card or make an offer or buy that card outright. Uh, coming up to this table, this will be unique to the sports card side of things, but other eBay buyers and sellers outside of the sports card hobby may see value here as well. Uh, we are looking at this in a three grade, so we have the three grade, and then we are looking at the half grade and whole grade below and the half grade and whole grade above. And I find a ton of value looking at this data because it helps me determine if I'm in the right price point or maybe there's an area or a, a hole in the market or you know something that drives me to downgrading or upgrading just based upon recent sales. Let's go ahead and take a, a look at a card where that might just be the case. Let's look at the 1957 Frank Robinson. It is also a Topps card. I believe it's card number 35. And let's look at that in a collector's grade of five. And you're seeing all the numbers change here on the screen. That's literally the tool working in the background and providing us with exactly what we want to see. And within generally a few seconds, you're going to have all of the data uh, for the live query that you just put in here. In a collector grade five, and for folks that aren't aware, a collector grade five in the sports card world, it, it's basically the year that the card was, or the decade the card was produced, it's burying that decade up with the actual grade assignment the grading companies have assigned that card. When we look at this specific card and we're looking at this reference chart, we instantly see that the SGC graded cards are selling for over $100 cheaper or less than the PSA cards. And as a collector, that's something I may want to take advantage of. Ironically, when we then look at the half grade below, which you would assume is generally cheaper, there, the recent sales of a grade 5 is selling for less than the average sales of a grade 4.5, both on the PSA and SGC side. Now, you might not be looking to spend three or $400 for this card, but there, over the last uh, 90 days, 
there's been an opportunity to pick up this SGC Frank Robinson rookie card uh, at $350 on average, and you're getting a pretty significant decrease when you compare it with some of its uh, similar um, uh, subgrades. The other thing I would note when I'm looking at this, PSA in a grade five is selling for about $120 more, or $110 more. But when you look at the grade of four and they're selling almost identical dead flat, almost to the cent. They're, all, they're basically selling for the same price. So that SGC grade five may be something that you would wanna take advantage of when you see data like this. Now looking at this from a buyer's perspective, that's generally how I view the world. But if you're a seller, there's things that you can certainly take advantage from. How many items are in your marketplace? How often are they selling? How is the information trending? Do you wanna be more aggressive and price it slightly higher? If uh, the last sell was tremendously higher than the average, well, it may give you an opportunity to increase the price and take advantage of potentially buyers coming in to buy your products. If the lowest sell continues to increase over time, you may want to move with that lowest sell volume or with the trending data. So there's a ton of information that you can capitalize in if you are a buyer or a seller in this space. Okay, we've shown you the speed of this. We've shown you exactly the format, uh, the format and how it's all laid out. At this point, you can determine whether you want to follow the video series over the next few days. If you do, please do something for me. Please give this video a like. The thumbs up uh, will certainly help get this video out to a broader group of people. This isn't designed for just the sports card hobby. This can be designed for all aspects of eBay buyers and sellers. So the like will certainly help get that information out. Additionally, if you like the content and you found value, please hit subscribe. If you're in the sports card market, please hit subscribe. I'm trying to make more and more videos like this, which are not 100% unique to the sports card uh, YouTube space, but it definitely some of those can be refreshed and uh, provide different sort of values. Additionally, inside the sports card space, I realize that uh, there are companies that are charging for this type of data. You can pay for subscription-based data. You can literally build this information for free and save the money that these companies are charging you to essentially give you this information. The information was free to them. They're just looking to package it and sell it to you. You can benefit by not paying the price and creating it for yourself. That's what we're going to show you over the next couple of days. If you'd like to be notified when the videos get dropped, go ahead and hit that notification bell. If not, we're going to go ahead and sign off, and we'll talk to you guys in the next one.